biologist Andreas Weber, in his book, The Biology of Wonder, lists three laws of desire. In the third law, he states, we must be close to other living beings in order to grasp certain depths of our own nature, certain ways of transforming our power and our deep imaginative and creative character. Un unquote. It is in our nature to connect. It is in the nature of hearts to adapt to another's beating. It is in the nature of minds to create and to embody that creation. It is in the nature of the life force to continue. And it is in the nature of our spirit to love. In the float, you enter a realm where the unspoken speaks, where our impulses blossom into the sensual, where thoughts and feelings reveal their dynamic origin and structure, where we can witness the architecture of our perceptions where we can witness deeper layers of intentionality. It is an ephemeral process, matrical in nature. The structure refers to itself, and by doing so, creates an opportunity to open, an opening of the inner to the outer, of the self to the other. We become more porous. It activates our inherent potential for enhancement. In essence, you return from where you have never left enhanced. One of the aspects of the float is the arising of the interoceptive processes into our awareness. Carl Jung stated, the upwelling of the interoception could be a door to the unconscious. Despite the deep and subjective nature of the float, it's vital how we speak of it, how our utterances and our discourse link together its many attributes as a wellness practice, as a therapeutic, its clinical importance, its enhancement potential, its perception-changing possibilities, its activation of the creative impulse, its capacity to activate a spiritual response, and not to forget its whimsical aspect. To speak of it is to use language as the music of what happens. To quote the poet, it is at root a way of happening. So, we are here. Great minds, great hearts gathering with great hope to begin again. Thank you.